All right, so today we are comparing the Nintendo games on the Nintendo Switch to the official hardware. This is my first time playing the NES games on the Switch. My NES is HDMI modded. In case you're wondering why the signal's so clear. Gives a good uh, list of games here to choose from. Not too bad. So, navigate game menus, confirm game selection. Okay. Here we go. So, I'm playing with a pro controller. Can kind of tell a little bit of input lag, but not too bad. <laughs> fail right in the beginning. Hit the ZLZR to suspend game. Okay, so it takes me to a menu. Oh, that feels pretty good. Definitely looks good. My switch right now is set to output 720p. In case anyone's worried about the scaling or anything like that. Wondering how everything looks compared to integer scaling or anything like that. Yeah, graphics look pretty spot on. I mean, it's NES. You don't have to worry about performance too much, but, you know, it doesn't stutter or anything like that. Input lag is really, really small. I mean, it is a wireless controller that I'm playing on. Of course, to me, the... The original Super Mario Brothers will always be the arcade version, the Versus. Even though this one was technically made first, the American audience got the arcade version released first before the NES version, which I actually have right there. I was playing that earlier. The arcade version of that game was the one that got me hooked on Nintendo games and video games in general. Maybe I'll do like a comparison video of the two games. But every time, when I, when I was little, every time we go to a pizza place or arcade, I always had to pump a bunch of quarters in Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, game, game plays really smooth. Probably the same emulator used on the NES Classic. So I'm right now I'm using the, the seven day trial. And I'll probably pay for the yearly membership of this. My only issue with the NES online service right now is you know, ever since the Switch came out, people have been able to play uh, Mario Kart or whatever online. And now you cannot play it online without subscribing to it. I mean, it's a really cheap service. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just kind of one of those buzz kills. Some games you can still play online without it. Like Fortnite, I was able to play before I subscribed to it. Or before I started the trial, I mean. Uh, Paladins, I was able to play that. But most of the games that I play on a regular basis on the Switch, uh, like Mario Kart, for example, uh, Doom, I uh, forget what else I tried, uh, was not able to sign in. So I had to start the trial. I mean, the way you, the way you pretty much kind of look at it is you've been uh, 
beta testing the online service until the official release. I don't know, I think they could have just added like a, another dozen games to this and kept the online play free and people still would have bought it. There we go, got that one. But a lot of people are complaining about the the voice chat through the cell phone. That doesn't bother me at all, actually. You know, anytime I play uh, Call of Duty on the Xbox or any game that has a lot of heavy voice chat, there's always a lot of foul-mouthed kids and things like that. And yeah, there's uh, parental controls on it, but having it through the a cell phone app takes Nintendo, it takes the responsibility away from Nintendo and puts more of it in the hands of parents. And Nintendo's more of a family friendly company, even though they got a pretty good selection of mature games now. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> so yeah, I actually, I actually have no problem with the uh, voice chat being on the phone at all. And months ago I was playing, uh, playing some private matches of Rocket League on my Switch with some friends on Xbox, and I was using the Xbox app on the phone to chat with them, and it's fine. And I haven't had a chance to try the online play yet, but some videos of that being demonstrated. Pretty responsive. It mimic my path on the other screen there that I played earlier. So yeah. I remember when Mario 3 was first coming out, everyone was super excited for it. Couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Of course, my, my parents owned a convenience store, my dad and my stepmom. Oh, I messed up the ghost house. I need two more coins. Let's find two more coins. Not the ghost house, the what's it called the ship the coin ship I don't know why I was thinking ghost house I am determined to get that coin ship there we go so to get the coin ship you turn the hammer brothers on the map to a coin ship you got to have the the coin values, the same number, both the both integers, and you want the second uh, number to the right on your points to match. So I have a five, a five, and a five. Like, like the points say 50 and then five, five. Of course, you wanna make sure you hit this uh, item here when your time is an even number, because otherwise it'll change the score. Now the Hammer Brothers will turn into a ship, and it's just full of coins. This game had lots of, lots of uh, tricks and stuff in it. Actually, let's go back over here. Let's see how responsive this is. So yeah, the game slows down exactly like the NES does with all the items on screen, so it it definitely plays identical to an NES, or really, really close to it. So many Goombas on the screen, and a little bit of slowdown. So yeah, you're definitely getting an NES experience off of this. Okay, let's play some Excite Bike. Selection B. Selection B is the one where you can play uh, 
with all the other racers on there. So color is a little off. That might be my capture card. So I was always more of a fan of the arcade version of Excite Bike more. Ah, crap. Overheated. My dad actually used to play this more than I did when I was a kid. So one of the things that really turned me on to the NES back in the day, and I never had an Atari. I was more of a Coleco kid. But um, when the NES came out, because I had played uh, Super Mario Brothers, Excite Bike, uh, Punch Out, uh, regular Mario Brothers, and maybe another game or two that I forget off the top of my head, uh, the NES came out. I was like, "Holy crap! Here's the system that you could play games and look exactly and play exactly or almost exactly like the arcade games did, or like the arcade versions of them." I mean, it was like almost spot on. But I mean, that was that's that just blew me away at the time. I am not doing well. I mean, with the exception of Punch-Out, because of course it was Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, uh, all the games were pretty close to arcade perfect. With the exception of the changes and stuff like that, with the like Super Mario Brothers being harder in the arcade, and I think Excite Bike had some more tracks. And they just added Versus Excite Bike to the, the eShop on Nintendo Switch, so I'm probably going to end up purchasing that. I lost. <laughs> it's okay. Let's play track five. So a lot of people were wanting the uh, more of a virtual console service on the Nintendo Switch versus like a Netflix style service that they apparently seem to be doing. But uh, I actually think this is a better idea. Like I actually like... Uh, I actually like Game Pass on Xbox Xbox One, even though I'm not a fan of purchasing stuff digitally. But uh, part of the reason I like digital purchases is, I mean, you look at the the original Wii. I mean, that all that, that those servers shut down. So probably probably I'm gonna keep overheating because I can't hear the TV because I got this thing on. <laughs> but um, what was it like? Oh yeah, the Virtual Console. So. I think this is actually a better idea to have them in like a Netflix style service. I mean, the only way it could have really worked in my opinion is if, um, if a lot of the titles would have been ported over and you could have ported your account over and things like that. If they would have did that, I think it would have worked out much better. Like for example, let's say you buy like a bunch of digital content on the, on the Wii U and, um, and then you buy your switch, you port your account over and then, all the titles that they made compatible, uh, you could play automatically on the Switch. That's how they should have did it, in my opinion. So, Pro Wrestling. Still one of the best Pro Wrestling games on any video game system. I always played Starman as a kid. The NES didn't really have a lot of good wrestling games. I had some WWF games at the time, but they were, really weren't that good. This game had like a tag team mode or something like that to be really good. They should have came out with a sequel with a tag team mode or something. But to this day, this is one of my favorite wrestling games. Most of the characters have similar movesets, but not the same. Each character has a signature move or two. Oh, avoid the clothesline? Ah, oh, missed it. Hit me with the knee. Like the Starman there has the somersault kick. This guy here has like some kind of drop kick. Ooh, threw me outside. Oh, big splash. Eddie Guerrero would be proud. Of course, it's a uh, Japanese pro wrestling rule, so it's going to count to 20 instead of 10. Oh, 
I missed it. Missed the timing on it. All right, Eddie Guerrero, Frog Splash. One, two, three. Oh my God, it's a slobber knocker. <laughs> oh, got out of the way. If I remember correctly, the final boss in this game has everyone's move. Back during the golden age of pro wrestling. Alright, so, Legend of Zelda. One of the greatest Nintendo games ever. One of the greatest video games ever. I mean, this game really changed everything. I mean, so many of these style, like fantasy style games, RPG style games, I mean, they were text-based on a PC or they were really hard to control. They weren't really in-depth. This game had a lot of uh, exploration in it. It was just like a really complex game to play or really complex in terms of how it was designed, but it was a real simple game to play. I mean, just walk into the cave, grab a sword, A to hit a sword, B to hit a special weapon. I mean, I played this game for months, not knowing what the game was about or how to play it, but still enjoyed it and eventually just figured it out. Of course, you know, we were too stubborn to play the, or too stubborn to read the instruction booklet at the time. I'm curious if it says uh, read manual for details on the bottom. In fact, the NES version says, please look at manual for details to see if... Yeah, it still does. <laughs> so I went stay at my dad's in the weekend. That's where my NES was. Um, the neighbor kids, uh, Tyler and Jeremy, their names were. They, were. they were fun to hang around with at the time. They would uh, come over and we'd play video games and... All of us were into this game, Legend of Zelda. And of course, you know, the game was new. There was hardly much any uh, any Nintendo power or anything like that. So we'd pretty much be exploring this game together. And we, you know, write stuff down on paper and a little bit. Even when Nintendo power and stuff came out, uh, a couple friends of mine from school, we'd be drawing our maps and stuff on graph paper during recess in the library and things like that. Total nerds back then. It was great. I wish I still had all that stuff that I made. I mean, this game here, it's amazing how well it it holds up today. Even with the simple 8-bit graphics. Just, just the style of gameplay. I mean, you can make this game with HD graphics now. And the gameplay and everything would still hold up. I mean, look at Link to the Past. That easily holds up today. There we go. Go up here and grab the bow. Does it still have the cross on the shield? Yep, still has a cross on the shield. Now 
Now, funny thing about this room here, and a lot of similar rooms in other dungeons, is when I first played this as a kid, both you know, my neighbors and I, we didn't realize that you could push that for months. Like, uh, when we're looking through, like, the manual and stuff, and it showed, like, the power bracelet, we thought you had to have the power brace bracelet to move those stones. Now, a power bracelet was only needed to move the stones on the overworld to take, like, little shortcuts through the map. So, we're playing through the game. We conquer level 1, level 2, level 3, and discovered level 6, and I think level 8, I believe. Didn't get very far, but we, you know did decent in it not realizing that we could grab the items in the dungeons already <laughs> I think I discovered it by accident oops fail <laughs> So if Mario 3 has that slowdown, it's a good bet this game will have the slowdown as well with too much stuff on screen. There we go, got the boomerang. And that's the first dungeon in Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, NES games, they play really good. They play pretty much as good as these arcade archives. I mean, like the arcade archives, it's it's a different version than the NES version, even though it's pretty close. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's almost worth the, the price of the Nintendo service alone. And I believe if your Switch is not online it'll still play the games for up to seven or ten days but yeah it's definitely worth picking up um that's my video for today so please like and subscribe leave a comment let me know what you think and i'll see you guys later